Welcome! This session is all about best practices to enhance learner engagement and success with Brightspace rubrics. We'll be discussing how to use rubrics to engage learners in all stages of assignments and assessments from start to finish. We'll be talking about best practices using rubrics to evaluate and communicate with students, including using general initial feedback, rubric visibility settings, adding rubrics to learning activities, scoring the rubric with personalized feedback, and communicating to students where to review the scored rubric feedback. Who am I? Well, my name is Suzanne Schlangen. I'm a system administrator and business analyst at Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. Details about Minnesota State can be found at our main website, minnstate.edu slash system. I provide assistance to our 33 campuses with local administrators and faculty for all things related to the Brightspace online learning environment. One question we often get from faculty is how to better provide feedback to learners in an online learning environment. One way we can do this is with using rubrics in Brightspace. To start with, what's a great feature when creating or editing a rubric? It's something called initial feedback in which we can store feedback within the rubric itself saving time later when assessing student work. In this initial feedback section of a rubric, a teacher can add in general feedback or comments they typically give to students who achieve a certain level for a specific criterion. We define the comments or feedback ahead of time and store it in the rubric itself. And those comments are only visible to us as the teacher when we're assessing student work. In my case, I've set up initial feedback for four different levels. And in that feedback, I've provided a link to a video, my preferred contact method, and a link to a course activity or resource. It's one way we can save time when later assessing student work and wanting to add this pre-filled in feedback for a student. What's another important thing to remember when creating or editing a rubric? The rubric visibility itself, which determines if your students can view the unscored rubric ahead of completing the assignment. When creating or editing a rubric, the rubric visibility options determine whether students can access the unscored or scored rubric. So some questions to ask is whether students should have access to the unscored rubric before completing the activity or the, un, or the scored rubric after it's been used to evaluate. We do have three options for rubrics. Rubric is visible to students is the default option. And that option is recommended because in that case, students have access to the unscored rubric before they complete the activity and the scored rubric after they complete the activity and they've been assessed. You do have two other options, such as completely hiding the rubric from the student's view or hiding the rubric from the student's view until feedback is published. In most cases, we want to keep the rubric to be visible to students at all times so they can access the unscored and scored rubric. Now that we've set up our rubric and we've determined a couple of things, we've added our general initial feedback, we've looked at the rubric visibility settings, we now want to ensure students can have access to the rubric by adding the rubric to learning activities in our Brightspace course. We can add a rubric to three areas in Brightspace, assignments, discussions, or graded items in the gradebook. For the item we're editing, 
such as the, an assignment folder. We can find the Add Rubric button or menu and select one or more rubrics we want to add to that item. Once we've added the rubric to the learning activity or graded item, students have better access to the rubric. What about scoring a rubric? What features do we have available to us to personalize our feedback to a student? Well, we can make use of other features and functions in Brightspace for that purpose. First, we can make use of the first name replace string, which is all one word and in curly brackets. This first name replace string displays the student's first name to them in our comments. Second, we can link out to course material and resources to help direct our students to learn more or improve their skills. To do this, we highlight the word in the text we want to hyperlink, click the plus sign icon, click insert quick link, choose the destination such as content, and choose the resource. These are two quick and easy ways to personalize the feedback to the student and make it relevant to them. Now after we've personalized our feedback to our students and published the feedback to them, we want to communicate to students where to find the scored rubric feedback. Students can access an unscored rubric from the discussions tool and the assignments tool. So when navigating to a discussion topic and viewing that discussion topic, there is a link to view the unscored rubric. And that's ac accessible to the student before they click start a new thread or reply to an existing thread. Similarly, when navigating to an assignment and clicking on to submit to an assignment, the student can view the unscored rubric before they submit to that assignment. The student can view the scored rubric in the gradebook for both assignments and discussions, as well as for any particular items that are not tied to things in the course. One quick way to check that students can access the unscored rubrics in the assignments and discussions is to use the role switch feature. Try it out from the mini bar. Select the menu where your name displays, then select view as learner or view as student, and then navigate to the discussions and assignments tool in your course as a student and view those unscored rubrics. That helps you to know that your students have access to those rubrics. We covered the best practices to enhance learner engagement and success with Brightspace rubrics, including when creating rubrics to check that rubric visibility setting status and make your selection, and also use that initial feedback for comments that you typically use for students. We added rubrics to learning activities so students can better access those unscored rubrics, and we scored the rubrics with personal feedback like replace strings and quick links. Then we communicated to students where to review the rubric feedback, and we can even check for ourselves using the role switch feature. Thank you, and please feel free to contact me at my email, suzanne.schlungen at minstate.edu or at linkedin.com at Suzanne V. Schlungen. And my first name is spelled S-U-Z-A-N-N-E, my last name is spelled S-C-H-L-A-N-G-E-N. -E Thank you and have a wonderful day.